Over the weekend, Orem police arrested a man who confessed to killing his girlfriend in a fight over a broken vape cartridge. This latest incident serves as a grim reminder of the impact of domestic violence anywhere here in Utah, too. To help us go in-depth on this important issue, we're live with Liz Salas with the Utah Domestic Violence Coalition. Liz, thanks for being with us. Um, let's, let's just start by, you know, I say domestic violence is everywhere that that is the case um, and it tends to not have a bright light shined on it is that the case yeah domestic violence can happen to anyone anywhere it doesn't discriminate really in any way and the more we talk about it the more we let people know what resources are available the better opportunity we have to prevent it. And it sounds like, Liz, in, in this particular case we're talking about, we, we bring up that fact that it, it was a fight over a vape cartridge. That's probably not a really important fact, except to say it, it could just really be anything that triggers something. It's more about the person and less about the circumstance. 100%. Domestic violence is about power and control. And when someone is trying to maintain power and control in a relationship, that's an unhealthy relationship. And so what happens is they, they use violence many times to, in that attempt to maintain that power and control, which is evidenced by what happened in this case, that ended up with the worst possible scenario, which is death. And we know that violence begets violence, so we really need to do all we can to teach people better ways to engage in relationships and to respond when things aren't going the way they want them to. And, and help us to understand um, the psychology of this too, because I know often people hear about situations and they say, okay, if, if this person is like this, then why doesn't the partner remove themselves from the situation? That, that, that's a whole lot harder than it, than it sounds just saying that. It definitely is. I mean, for one thing, most of the people in these relationships are with this person because at the beginning they cared for them. You know, there was a mutual uh, love or affection that took place and then they begin to, to see other signs. Hopefully, sometimes they don't always see the signs. And, and many times by the time um, it gets to the point where it's very violent, they might have a lot invested in it already. There's also threats they might be experiencing from the individual if they want to leave, the individual might make threats toward them or to their loved ones or their pets. So there are a lot of factors that not everybody understands or knows about when somebody is experiencing violence. And I think that's why it's so important for us as a community to know the signs, to lend an ear, to, to know the resources so that you can connect people with resources. And even if a perpetrator wants to try to change their behavior, Utah Domestic Violence Coalition can help them. We can connect them with resources to, to try to get them to respond in a healthier way and to save lives. That's ultimately what we want to have. We want to have healthy relationships and we want to save lives. I want to go back to something that you said earlier in, in uh, what, what you were just saying, which is that uh, we have to know the signs. Um, what, what should we be looking for? I think some of the most obvious signs are isolation, uh, possessive behaviors. Sometimes someone who is uh, who exerts power and control in a relationship can actually seem very endearing at first because they're very concerned about you know what the person's doing or where they're going or who they're with or what they're wearing. But that could be an indication that they're more concerned about power and control than they are the actual um, well-being of that individual. And then, you know, we have a lot of psychological verbal abuse that can take place. And sometimes we see a lot more of that than we do the actual physical violence. It's not usually until physical violence occurs that a lot of other people get involved and, and or someone seeks help. And was, what, what is it that someone should do? Talk to the person out there right now who's thinking, oh, this is, I, I see this in my friend or my sister or whatever. Talk, talk to that person. What, what, what should they do? Well, I think I want to talk first to the person who might be experiencing violence and tell them they're not alone and that there's support out there and there are ways that they can safely get help. And so directing people to those resources, they can call the link line, which is 1-800-897-LINK, or they can also contact the local, local victim service provider in their area if they feel more comfortable doing that. They can go to safe places to find other resources and get help. A library is a great place to get help. For, for people who want to help or who suspect abuse might be occurring, if there's a safe way that you can engage with that individual and let them know that you are concerned and connect them with resources, that is one great way to help. 
and be patient because like I said, not everybody's going to leave. They may never leave, but we can help them find ways to stay safe, as safe as possible in a relationship, or they might not leave right away, but if they know someone's out there who's gonna listen and not judge them, if they choose to stay one more time, two more times, three more times, that that person will be there for them when they do really finally get away, that's huge for someone to know because otherwise, not helping them continues to perpetuate that power and control and isolation that the perpetrator demands. An 897 link. Uh, we had that number just up on our screen uh, for a long time there, 1-800-897-LINK. And Liz Solace, thank you so much for taking some time with us. I, it, maybe you just helped somebody out at home um, figure something out about a situation like this. I sure hope so. Thank you.